There you go. All right. It is October 15th, second meeting of the month. We'll call the meeting to order at 7 o'clock. Uh, three trustees, fiscal officer, uh, is here, Chief Altman uh, will not be with us this evening. He has a conflict. So, I would now entertain, excuse me, entertain a motion to adopt minutes of the meeting of October 1st. There's some changes. A couple of very small I clarifications. Move adoption mm -hmm. of the minutes with the um, three changes noted on this draft. There, there are dates, time, and mm -hmm. one shipment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? I'll second. <laughs> That's good. Mm -hmm. Any discussion regarding those? Welcome, Steve. Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. All right, we'll pay these bills and then move we'll, on. Um, now I obtain a motion to approve payment of bills in amount of $35,418.81, broken down general fund $4,651.97, fire fund $19,426. Ninety-four cents. Seven six hundred eighty-nine dollars six cents. EMS billing four thousand nine hundred twenty-seven dollars eighty-two cents. Road bridge two thousand nine hundred sixty-nine dollars ten cents. And capital fund two thousand seven hundred fifty-three dollars and ninety-two cents. Is there a motion to approve payment of those accounts? I would make the motion to approve payment of those accounts. All second. second moves. Mr. Collins for seconds. Any further discussion regarding payment of those accounts? Any other may we vote, please. Uh, Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. I now have to turn the floor over to Steve Ackley for any and all information he has to impart to us. Well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for coming this evening. Um, Don, were you here last year at the whole time when, when we went through this? Are, are you familiar? Uh, no, I was not here. Okay. And I know you've said Anything it. you've already told me, I've forgotten. Okay. Well, I knew you had sat in on some meetings in the past, so I, I didn't know where we were at. Mm -hmm. um, well, just as a, a just as a broad stroke overview, we have taken several different types of insurance plans and kind of put them together to build a, a benefits plan in the most cost-effective way for the employees. We have a very, very rich benefit plan. It's, it's worked out well. Um, this report that I'm, I'm going to start kind of, I opened it up to this because I'm going to start on kind of the back page here and I want you guys to go find where it's at. We, we use two parts. Here's one you guys can share over there. Oops, okay. We are on the, like, the third page back from the back. Um, we, we use an insurance company to fund our, our catastrophic type coverage. It's a $3,500 deductible, then 100% coverage after that. And then the township insure, self-insures along with the employee that first $3,500. That said, the insurance plan that we're buying, that $3,500 is also a form of self-insurance plan. So it's kind of confusing. But because it's self-insured, every dollar that we pay to National General Insurance Company, is broke up into three parts. Part of it goes to pay for their overhead, the cost of doing business, my commissions, and all that kind of stuff is built in the administrative bucket. And you've got a bucket that buys reinsurance to protect any large claims because you guys can afford to, to absorb a million dollar claim. So they're buying reinsurance to protect you guys. And then the third bucket is actual claims. They're putting, for every dollar you send in, they, they take part of that money and set it aside for claim paying up. And worst case scenario, they'll use up all that money in the bucket and your liability stopped at that point. And you know, you just don't want to get on you. But you guys have had a very good year this year. And on that, that page that I just showed you, on the, uh, I guess it's the third column over where it says employer prefunded claims bill, each month when you pay your premium for the seven employees, $1,761 of that money is going into that bucket to pay claims out of it. <clears throat> so the column right next to it, um, year to date, this report was run from December of last year through end of August this year. So year to date, 
you've paid into it fifteen thousand eight hundred and forty eight dollars. And if you look over two more columns over the year to date claims paid, they've only paid thousand sixty five dollars out of that bucket of money. So as of right now. If you go all the way over to the right hand side, you've got about $14,784 still sitting in that claims bucket. Now, the year's not over until November 31st, so. November. November. Not 30th. December. Yeah, no, November. Yeah, yeah, de December 1st, basically. But So the year's not over until then, so <laughs> something could happen between now and then that would eat into that bucket. But if the trend continues the way it is right now, you guys will get a pretty sizable refund back again. Because they split whatever money's left in that bucket, they split it 50 50 right now. And they said you have to balance. And I think every year for the last seven years, you've gotten a refund back. Mm -hmm. wow. so, so it's looking very well again this year. When I got the renewal. So this is the amount that covers that deductible level. No, this is the amount. That, uh, yeah, well, I don't know what you're asking. This is the. Th that's. What this fund be? covers the deductible. It covers it covers anything over thirty five hundred dollars. Oh, over. Yes. Any claims that you would spend over thirty five hundred dollars per employee are covered under that under this plan right here. Okay. Right. Township covers the, the the amount from two hundred and fifty or something. Yeah. The employee. Yeah. Yeah, the employee. Up to three. Up to the thirty five hundred. Correct. And there's some there's some sharing in there. I think it's shared on a 50-50 uh, basis. So the employee the employee has a two hundred fifty dollar deductible, and then they share the bills fifty fifty. And so this this fund covers that range. That is no this this fund that you're just that you're looking at right there covers any bills that get turned in over thirty five hundred dollars. Wow. So, so I mean, you could easily have a car accident and go way over 15000 Yes, you could. Yeah, and so that money could be eat up between now and, and December 1st if somebody has a large claim. But it would have to be over a $3,500 claim. But well, Ally would cover the additional amount of whatever that million or that amount, I would yeah. say $50,000. Whatever, whatever amount. Yeah, whatever yeah amount. you guys are, you're not on the hook for it. Mm -hmm. but, but they, every year, they take their best guess based on your census data, your, the age of your, your population, your, your, your employees, mm -hmm. and their male, female, and all the, all the characteristics that go into determining that, they take your best guess as to how many claims that group is going to have for the following year. If they guess wrong, and it's to your benefit, they give you money back. If they guess wrong, and it goes against them, they just absorb it into their cost of doing business. So you're protected. Mm -hmm. um, but as I said, this, this this is working out this year. It looks like it again to your advantage. Now, the other side, the other part of the puzzle is that we self-insure that first $3,500 together with Claim Links. Um, Claim Links is a third-party administrator down in Cincinnati that we've hired. They administer the over age 65 prescription program for you guys. Um, so any claims that your uh, your Part D prescription plan, if that Part D coverage is not as good as what the employees have here, you can turn that into claim links, and they will reimburse you for the difference on that. So that everybody here that's on the payroll has the exact same benefits as what everyone else did. And your claim links uh, part of it's been running real good this year as well. You have a, you have your annual or your monthly administration fee to them which runs around three hundred dollars a month for them to administer that whole part of it but your claims have been very small i i, I walked off and left the dollar and i'll sit in my desk but the claim amounts have been very small to them as well this year. So, okay let me walk you through this renewal real quick um you can go back to page one if you want to actually page two I mean. um, when i got the renewal in week and a half, two weeks ago, they were asking for an 8% increase. So even though you had a very good year, they were expecting three years in a row with, <laughs> with very good results. Statistically, the fourth year, we're going to have some claims. So they were asking for an 8% increase. 
Uh, plus also built into that is what they call the medical trend rate. Just they, they think medical trend rates are going to increase this next year. So they were asking for 8% increase, but I went back to them and said, hey, you guys, you've, you've been off every year for the last three years. This group has been very profitable for you. We've made money on them. If I can get them to renew this thing in October and get it off your stack, because you got to remember that with Obamacare, most all businesses, renewals got switched over to either December or January effective date. So the insurance companies now have thousands of companies renewing in those two months. And they just get, they get back loaded by the time they get closer to December. So I said, if I can, if I can get this renewal done in October and get it into you, you will leave the rates the same as what they were last year. So they agreed to do that. So that's what you're looking at right there at the front is um, basically zero percent change in rates. Um, there's maybe a few cents difference, but it shows you your current rate and your renewal rate right there, right there on that thing. They're within pennies of each other. So, so that's the first page. Uh, next page just shows you a list of names of the people that are on the plan. And it shows you a breakdown of how the rates are being figured. We have um, what's called a composite rating system. So any employee you hire, whether they're 18 years old or 58 years old, or a single employee is going to be the same cost. It's not an age rating product. It's <coughs> the only thing that makes a difference is if you have a spouse or children or entire family. Uh, so that's, that's your rate breakdown. The next page will show you a little bit more of what I was talking about initially, where they are going out and buying reinsurance to protect them and to protect you. So on the, uh, if you're looking at the stop loss insurance limit page, I think it, from what I can see, you're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see that first item there says it's a $10,000 specific limit. So that means that any claim over $10,000 for any employee or any dependent of that employee, once that claim hits $10,000, that claim is completely stopped from a liability standpoint to you guys. And, and another insurance company steps in through re, what they call reinsurance and, and covers all those claims for the remainder of the year for that person. So you're limited, you're, you're, you're protected at a maximum of $10,000 for any one person. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but what happens if you have five people that all have a $10,000 claim? You don't want to get hit for $50,000 either. So then the next one right below that is an, another layer of of stop loss insurance is called an aggregate limit. So once all the claims in the entire group hit $21,731, then you're protected from that point on for the remainder of the year as well. So they know that your maximum liability, the most you could ever have to spend on claims, is that $21,731. So they take that number, divide it by 12, and that's how much each month then that they're going to charge you for your claims account. That's your maximum liability. If at the end of the year, like you were this year, if you've had a very good year and haven't used that money up, then that's how you end up with $14,000 left in your claim fund. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then they show you down at the bottom of that chart, they show you how your money's being spent. So every month you're spending $5,300. $2,147 of it is going to pay for that insurance for those two stop loss insurance premiums that we just looked at. Uh, 1,346 of it is going for administrative and sales expenses. And then the $1,810, if you multiply that times 12, that equals that 21,731. So. And then the next page gives you just a real quick high level view of the insurance plan, but basically it's a $3,500 deductible plan, 100% of everything else. Um, and then that also has your prescription coverage built into that uh, with copay for various kinds of prescriptions. And then I'm not going to go through the reports, but there's there's a couple of reports back in there you can look that shows you um, who who your people are using, green and oil carrier, and so on down through. You just can, you can look at that at, at your leisure. So any questions on that medical part of it? My recommendation is that you renew for another year of National General. 
because it has been very profitable for you to, to be with them under the structure. Yeah, Any questions from the two actual participants in the room that are using it? <laughs> what? What? No. What did you say? It is our insurance company. Oh, it's, it's that. Well, sort of. we have lots of them. Your, yeah, you have lots of them. What's my card? Mm -hmm. Your card's going to say National General on it, then it's going to have Aetna on it as well. They buy the list of doctors from Aetna. So, if you go to a doctor and you say you participate in my insurance, they're going to ask you, well, who's your insurance? And it's going to be the Aetna logo that they're going to look at. Mm -hmm. But the actual insurance company is National General. But then they use. Oh, well, mm -hmm. well, well, then you have, a, then you have another card called Claim Links, which. Even for a minute, but that doesn't sound well, like. Allied. Might say Allied. Might say Allied. Okay. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah, Na National General, they, they're. They use the name Allied for your product, so I, I just assume they had National General. On so Allied. Allied. So they asked me, are you still with Allied? I yeah. Said, yeah. So yes. it's okay. Yeah. Right. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't. <laughs> There's too many cards. Too many <laughs> cards involved in this. I didn't know what name was on the card. <clears throat> Mine says Visa. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> it's the same as well, this is usually the time when we've got to commit to the program and sign all the papers, but we already did that. So. Right. All right, um, and then the last part of, of my uh, presentation is on the very last page of that folder is your dental insurance, and that's with Superior Dental, and they also gave us a 0% renewal this year, they, they just kept the rates the same as they were last year, and that was nothing of mine, I didn't have to fight for that, the Superior's been coming in 0% zero, zero on all my renewals this year, so. Everybody's got good so teeth. They're doing well. They, they've done very well in South Carolina, I guess. They they got they just got bought out by Medical Mutual. Oh, really? So, but Medical Mutual was saying that they're going to leave them alone, but I hear that all the time. And then sure. get Kmart <laughs> buying Sears, we're going to leave you alone. Yeah. Then they go I thought mut Mutual would mean we'd be owners. Well, Medical Mutual, you are. But Superior is being run as a separate entity. So. <coughs> So anyway, my recommendation is that you stay with Superior for another year as well, and I don't need a signature on that if that's what you go to do. Okay. All right. Um, motion for that. You know, we do need a motion to continue coverage of uh, Superior Dental for the year 2019. I'll, I'll make that motion. I'll second the motion. We need a second and further discussion regarding the motion. Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. And Mr. Mitchell, can I get your signature on that? On that yes. Mm -hmm. We were discussing earlier the evolution of signatures the longer you're in the job. Mm -hmm. the, the lazier you get, your signature becomes longer. very, you know, no, 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 no. you can't really tell what it says. <laughs> if, if you, like, some point in the unit talking. That looks a little more legible. I can read, I can read president or the trustees out of it. There you go. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to read his name, but yeah, that is not. Good. Well, thanks for putting everything together for us, Steve, and, and coming down and uh, and taking the time to make this special trip for the for this meeting to save us eight uh, percent. We appreciate eight percent. Well, thank you for letting me come in on short notice. Mm -hmm. uh, I it's a good relationship. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Be safe going home. Thank you. Let's get back quickly to that from the minutes. Uh, are you going to make up? Oh, uh, from Friday. Yeah. From yeah. Friday? Yes. Okay. It's right. on my desk, but you know our problems. Okay. We'll get okay. to it today. All right. So then we'll go to back to the normal agenda and cover the. Uh, Correspondence for the period. We have a cancellation of all meetings uh, for MVRPC for, for October and November, the remainder of October and November. Uh, we have a voter's guide from the League of Women Voters. We have a grassroots clipping from the Ohio Township Association. Uh, we have a, um, a notice from Veteran that apparently our budget billing or uh, contracted billing uh, with the township is up. And, 
we need to take a look at that because they will uh, uh, they'll go to, a, to from a, like a 39 cent per therm to a dollar or more if you don't uh, if you don't recontract out for the supplier. So I'd be happy to look at that. I've just done one for my house. I've done one for my mother-in-law's house. I've done one for my oh, son. You're you know. a professional. Yeah, Please do take a look at it. Um, if anybody's at home using natural gas and got one of these, be sure and sign up with a um, somebody. With, with somebody because if you don't, you're going to spend a lot more money. We got any information from uh, uh, MBRPC about a PDEC seminar, which doesn't apply to us. Uh, we had a confirmation from Green County from the Board of Commissioners that uh, the resolution that we sent in to them a couple weeks ago about requesting uh, our increased share of the motor vehicle license tax that Bob Geyer uh, offered to share with townships had been approved and we will be receiving that money starting that additional money and don't ask me how much it is um, as of January 1st. <clears throat> We have a letter of invitation from Judge uh, Thomas and Theum, uh, for a celebration, uh, as it were, on uh, National Adoption Day, November 8th, at the County Courthouse in Xenia. Uh, he's inviting all, any or all of us to come and uh, um, participate in a, a set of adoptions that he will be um, officiating over on that date. Apparently, because I've contacted for some names, all political subdivisions in, this, in the uh, county have been invited to that. Uh, a uh, newsletter from Green County Council on, Council on Aging. Uh, another new packet customer from DMS Inc. Um, requesting a signed copy of the estimate, which was incorrect. So that had to be redone and sent back and forth. <coughs> so where are we at on that now? They, they, they did um, authorize credit to us. Yeah, so. But has the mailing gone out? No, it hasn't even no, been. No, we're still on the It hasn't even been designed yet. And I'm, I'm going to put off the mailing until after the election because I don't want it competing with 8,000 postcards from Every, everybody and their brother. No. So, you know, I'm not in that big of a rush for it at the moment. But it, now, now I, I need to send some pictures of the cemeteries and some um, some wording of what, what we want. So we'll, we'll knock that around as, as it goes along. Um, a letter from, uh, an email from uh, a woman who we had uh, rearranged some of her burial uh, plots in the cemetery and so we straightened that out and that's good. Um, care works notification, just general chat. Um, some messages back and forth about the street fair which has already been about manning the booth for the <coughs> Yellow Springs Clifton Connector which happened, got a, a, a lot of good comments about the uh, the potential connector. Um, yeah. Everybody likes it as long as it doesn't go through their front yard <laughs> or backyard. Uh, is there an electronic file of, uh, I don't know if there's one proposed route or alternative routes that could be? Someone asked me mm -hmm. if I had a map, mm -hmm. and I said I know one exists, but I didn't. Sure, I can I can dig that out and forward it to you. Okay, thanks. So, I don't know where it is, but I know who it came from, so I'll just go back to his his correspondence to us. Um, some information about oh, this isn't actually this isn't this is new correspondence because it came this afternoon, but it, it's about the pre bid meeting tomorrow afternoon at two o'clock. Uh, I had asked Dan Dan Montgomery. If he'd had any questions or inquiries regarding the bid notice and confirming the, the time. Hi, 50 March 1 on 2908 Road. Had a pleasant response from him. Uh, I don't know where it went, but he said he'd had quite a, 
quite a few inquiries about the uh, oh, I don't know right, about the um, pre bid and the new bid and the pre bid for tomorrow. It was interesting. He sent us a list of, of people who had contacted the um, um, middleman to you know to get copies of, of the uh, of the bids. And it's a, it's a pretty good sized list. It's bigger than the big, certainly bigger than the last one. And he he expects a pretty good crowd tomorrow at the. Uh, um, he says I don't know. If the folks who showed up last time will be there or not, but he's prepared for a larger crowd because he's had more interest, so that's good. So, we'll see how that goes tomorrow. So is your company going to be only fire? Potentially, yeah. At least they picked up, they picked up the information of what the, of what the design is. Okay, that pretty much takes it. Oh no, wait a minute, got one more here. Um, I guess we could put this under, oh, well, we could put this under some chair, but no, we can't wait. Mm -hmm. It's from a local resident uh, who said that they had just had a great experience meeting with Dan mm -hmm. and getting a sense of the whole green burial thing. He was so helpful and so good natured. Mm -hmm. uh, and <laughs> the perfect, that's right, the perfect guy for the job. Very positive experience. How much did you pay this lady? <laughs> uh, I've selected a plot and want to find out Margaret's not like, okay. So they took care of that. And then she additionally sends a, a follow-up to that and says, just spoke to the National Home Funeral Alliance spokesperson, Katie Ann Inaliski, you know her? Uh, out in Washington State. She She's a former uh, resident of Yellow Springs, and I might even know her, mm -hmm. but I don't know her. Katie Ann Inaliski. She had great things to say about Dan, Ooh, which is which is high praise in her industry. Mm -hmm. She was here in June of 16th and spoke at the Rockford Chapel on home barrels and green barrels. I spoke there too, but she didn't say. I have some specific <laughs> questions that she <laughs> took care of it. So that's good. Well, congratulations, Ooh. Daniel. You might only know this. It's it's <laughs> nice to hear that you do something good. I try. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Any other correspondence this evening, in or out? Apparently not. We will go to fire department. No, we won't because there is no fire department. There's a memo. Copy the memo. Yeah. There was one in your box. That's right. I'm not gonna go get it. Um, uh, Chief Altman writes that uh, activities since the last meeting, there were 40 EMS incidents, 24, excuse me, 21 fire incidents, 33 fire safety inspections. That's amazing. They did 33 fire safety inspections. Three huh? Yes, three there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they said they had a busy uh, weekend events wise. Friday, they hosted the fire prevention open house here with giveaways, kid combat challenges, and Casey's special ice cream sundae with a warm donut and ice cream on top. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Flyers went home with every kid at MLS, uh, Mills Lawn, and the Antioch School, but unfortunately due to the weather, it was a small crowd. Then Saturday, they were joined with the masses and stood by a street fair with the smallest crew they've had in years, 15 people. I never knew they had that many people. That's a lot. I thought they had like five. And there were five calls during the street fair. <laughs> He's going to the International Conference of uh, Fire Chief, Volunteer Fire Chief uh, Officers on November 7th through the 12th in Florida. Denny will be acting chief this time, teaching a class uh, in Morrow County, October 27th and 28th. I assume uh, last year he went to this uh, conference and he did graciously offer. He pays his own way to get there and back. So it's, it's not on the township fund. Uh, I think we paid for I had two volunteers resign due to life changes, uh, Marcus Perry and Andrew Corrin, and we wish them uh, the best in the future. No expenditure. So <laughs> that's his report for the evening. Uh, anything uh, in or out from the fire department from the board? Thanks. 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 Than
And then we'll move to the new firehouse report, which I just gave. I gave up the, the whole report there and their correspondence for the, basically the meeting tomorrow. So, anything else from the crowd on the new firehouse? Looking forward to a big stack of bids on the 30th. Getting excited now. <laughs> Uh, okay. Cemetery. Sir. Well, we got two burials since our last meeting. We both have the Air Force and both full burials. I have one coming Saturday in Ashes and in Ashes. Ashes at 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock. And then one pending for Clifton. I don't know how soon that will be. Somewhat in the yeah. future. Mm -hmm. But that's about it. And then uh, I'm going to try to get my bases in this week. Mm -hmm. We'll be ready. They're all formed out, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Except for the one that we're looking for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the ones I'll, I'll flag the ones where they go for Tim. So mm -hmm. for I, I don't know how soon it's for He said maybe this week. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get mine done before next week. So. I don't think we had any influx of cars into the cemeteries for the street fairs, so I think. I think that worked out all right. No, we didn't think it down when you took uh -huh. it. No, Sometimes they'll yeah. move something and go in. Mm -hmm. I, I went about two or three times and I didn't, I didn't see anybody back in here. Uh, so, that's it. Good. Good. Uh, let's see, I'll give your information for your contacts in case something comes up. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they all know. And you are responding to a request from a um, cemetery owner. I don't know what's his relation. I don't know the man's name because he left the message here, but didn't give his name about the Radowski. Uh, yes, Rogowski. Rogowski. Yeah, the stone fellow. Who, I talked to him like a year or so ago about it. Mm -hmm. He said sometimes you can get to it and you know, finally get to it. Mm -hmm. But he was there. I met with him. And he's looking to purchase a space next to his mother. And it's available. It's okay. Okay. We'll be back in here. Probably the first year, he said. Okay, good. Um, I had a message from, um, uh, oh, you were so nice to the lady about the natural burial, but I had a message from uh, Rosemary Fritz. Yes. And she said that she's very concerned about um, the washout of the, of the uh, on the curb, on the, around the curb, and she has to pull way off onto the onto the grass in order to get there. And she talked to you about it, and you said, "No, we are not fixing gravel for." I didn't tell her that. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> no, I didn't tell her that. Well, so we're not putting more gravel on this year. But I did move some gravel into that spot that had washed down. But I did move some back up there. Oh, but she asked, and I said, I don't think we're putting any gravel on this year. That's why I told her. I told her. that no, but it's work. I told the board of trustees would take care of that, mm -hmm. that little area for us, so she'd be able to get around there all right. So if you need to throw some more out I'll there. I'll take care of it. Uh, or Mike wants to pull the truck around there. I don't know how mm -hmm. it is. I know it, it does watch out. It's, right yeah, there. there's old black top underneath that curb right there. So it's in the hole. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll put it up with it. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Anything else for cemetery? <coughs> no? Roads? Um, oh. I have um, uh, Richard Hudnall. Hudnall? Hudnall? Richard Hudnall. 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 There is a Hudnall. Hudnall? Yeah. And uh, a stop sign that apparently damaged his uh, truck. A stop sign damaged the truck, or he damaged the stop sign? Well, I think the sign damaged the truck. I'm, this is, uh, I'm getting all of this second hand, but I mentioned it um, a year ago. So we could check it out. Where is it? I knew you were going to ask. <laughs> stop signs are not over. They're mm -hmm. counties. They have all our stuff on this ball the county. I have to check. But how would it, how would it be 
I would assign damage to truck unless you were too close to the sign. And I am too close to the sign. <laughs> well, I can't think you're not supposed to get out. Yeah, but it could be that the, a sign was bent or something. I think it's bent. But you're saying that all of the signs belong to the county. All the stop signs belong okay. to the county. But I'll go look for one of our signs is out of whack. If I can straighten yeah. it up a little bit or something. The only potential could be those two of ours at the stop ahead on South River. But South they're, River they're going out. They're not going they're in. Leaning, yeah, they're, they're leaning. I stood the one back up. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be interesting. So the I state was chosen for us. They just showed up there. And yeah. they, they, they were given to us. I didn't know anything about it. Showed up there. Hmm. They'll fix them twice now. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, they must, I mean, they're so tall, they must not be able, to, you must not be able to get them down into the ground. Down into the ground, but it, it, I need to probably need to run a, a cutoff post drive the ground and bowl it to it. To the wind, they do this, yeah. they, just, they just walk all over the place. Yeah. That's what's wrong with those. Maybe that's what you're talking about. Um, it's South River Road. I got this information from Chuck Buster, whom I go to the Cedarville gym with, and uh, apparently uh, Richard Hubman um, stopped him and asked where I was and, uh, on Friday. So Where's a crocodile? Mm -hmm. Will you see this gentleman again? Will he give you the information? Oh, yeah, I will. That's, I will see China what we're yeah. talking about. Yeah, I will. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're good, but maybe not that good. Yeah. It's the dance of the trustees. <laughs> okay. Oh, the tile on the monster guy called me about that. here again in between or after you and I talked and after I could have swore you said you went out there. I went out there and I, I talked to him on the phone while I was standing in his front yard and talked to him and then he called me today asked when I was going to get to it. That's, yeah, he's got and a I thing. Said, he's he's for three more weeks, you know, so it won't be this week. So three mm -hmm. weeks when I get back and he said, okay, so we'll take care of it. Mm -hmm. I pressed the therapy yard record this week. Mm -hmm. No, I and he was okay. I said, I'll, I'll really take care of it. Now, where is this at? Lamont. <coughs> last town square to the left. Tyler must be plugged up down there because it's coming up through the yard. We'll find out. So I think I've got everything lined up for my absence. I think we're covered. Okay. When is it you're leaving? Uh, next Monday evening. A week from today, I'll, I'll, I'll probably work with today one day. Let's pray for snow. Here. <laughs> so, so again, you'll be gone two weeks? I'll be back to work on the 5th of November. You'll be back the 5th of November. I'll be back to work. <laughs> I'll be just dying to get back to work. Yeah. <laughs> well, so anyway. Um, I'm going to turn it in Monday. Uh, the brand will load the cemetery next week. The following week, I don't think he's going to have anything to, to do with us. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to be over with that. I know she's a bear or something. This is a combination. I'm, I'm sorry, I have to skip this. This is a combination between the agenda items of, of roads and standing committee reports because at the last MVRPC meeting that I was at October 4th, uh, I was talking with a District uh, 8 representative on another subject, but then as long as I had them, I figured, well, I buttonhole them about people, a couple people have mentioned that they did not think Route 343, which was paved just a year ago, is in the kind of meticulous shape the state highway would be in 12 months after a complete paving. There's a lot of that's starting to rut, to the, the edges are starting to break up. Um, the truck wash, the trucks are pushing the blacktop, that's <coughs> where the ruts and the wash mm -hmm. is coming from. It was a hurried job. Yeah, it certainly was. 
<clears throat> and so I told him of uh, concerns about that, and, and he listened intently and was very polite about it, and said he'd look into it. And, and he was either going to uh, actually go drive the road, uh, which I thought was pretty good, go drive the road later that, that morning after the meeting, uh, or have state people, you know, go check it out. And I hadn't heard from him, so I sent him a message this afternoon saying, have you, did you get a chance to look at it? So I'll be interested to see what comes back from that. So we're supposed to pay that until this year, 18. Right. I don't know. And they jumped ahead and yeah. you know, it was a very job late in the season. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anything else for some chair or road? Let's jump right into this class of report for you. <clears throat> well, surprise, there's a, another amendment of permanent appropriations, and it's um, Resolution 2018 46, whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amendments to the following permanent appropriations in the general fund increase. Contracted services by a thousand, and in the fire fund, increased by advertising by a thousand. <clears throat> Excuse me. It only was short about forty some dollars, but I just don't know what's going to happen between now and the end of the year. So I went ahead and just bumped it up to a little more moot offset, doing this the same line mm -hmm. item at every meeting kind of thing. So anyway, what was the additional need on contracted services? Um, it was, oh, what did I just pay? You know, I was going to ask what. Uh, well, I, I, I was anticipating we're probably going to have um, another, uh, the fourth quarter of UAN services possibly, which is six hundred and some dollars. Mm -hmm. And what did I just pay? You just had us pay a, an authorization for contract services and doesn't say what they are. No, I mean, I must have cut, I cut a check for something. Mm -hmm. I can't think of what it is right now. Was that for me? No, no, mm -hmm. no, contractor services, no, it's, mm -hmm. I don't know, I have to look at the bills and see which one I, I um, increased it for. I can't think right off the top of my head what it was. Okay. Okay. Is there a motion to approve resolution 2018-46? Yes. I'll second that. Has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Other than what we already have. Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. I don't have anything else. Anything else for the okay. officer? Move to standing committee reports. Uh, for a period of two. I have, uh, I went to, I should say, I have to both the executive committee meeting and board of directors meeting, and they were all very interesting, but I thought the most interesting part about it was um, a vehicle transit asset management plan for the district. It's a, it's a large report they did, and it breaks down all the public service um, transit vehicles, the buses, the minivans, the bicycles, no, not the bicycles, that are being used all by, the, by all the different agencies, uh, how old they are, uh, what condition they're in, how many miles that, that they have on them since the last last year's reporting. It's a it's a very inter it's a very interesting uh, plan about how they project as to you know where the need is for public transportation, how much money they should commit to it, how many vehicles you know based on its usage, and they keep very good data. It was it was very impressive. So this. Includes, for instance, green cats. Includes green cats. Includes the senior citizen transportation cars. I think they're all using cars now, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're they're all in there. I mean, everything's in there. Mm. It's cool. Uh, regional planning uh, went through uh, normal stuff: zoning review, Xenia Township, uh, Sugar Creek Township, and one subdivision. Um, one subdivision review. Um, they're doing well under the new director. Uh, he's got a pretty good he's got a pretty good grasp on what's going on uh, at the county at the moment. Uh, he's got pretty good grasp on the 
uh, financial needs of regional planning and the budgetary needs from it and, and is dealing with the county on that. And he also is uh, going to make a few personnel changes uh, within, uh, within, the, um, within the department uh, that the executive committee um, agreed when necessary. So um, I think that's working out, I think that's working out well with the new man. The uh, mill seems to be fine. I was in there the other day. It was, in, it was in good shape. Uh, which with the uh, senior center, um, I, mean, I didn't go to the uh, meeting concerning the uh, senior center apartments, senior apartments mm -hmm. behind the uh, Yellow Springs Fire Department. But I did call Suzanne, and uh, I'm going to meet with her uh, this week. And, uh, my sister-in-law, Carol McKeever, mm -hmm. has uh, offered to help me write the letter. Mm -hmm. So I will have that ready for you at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Economic Sustainability Committee mm -hmm. Um, I did attend that meeting, and uh, the they're going to uh, prepare a list of all the topics that were covered in the under brainstorming, mm -hmm. um, and. We will um, get that list. Karen, um, who's handed the chamber, is uh, putting, compiling that. And uh, so at the next meeting, which should be the first Wednesday of November, mm -hmm. um, we will cover that. And uh, work some more on the, the list. Good. Good. Here, but making these meetings. Yeah. Not long now. Great. Um, Margaret, we need to add uh, under. We need to move around a couple of things. But it, let's say under the uh, Clifton Union Cemetery, either above or below it. We need to add for Don's uh, position as the. Uh, MBRPC TAC representative from the board, and so if, you know, if there's something that's so at the MBRPC TAC, TAC representative, okay. yeah, mm -hmm. okay. or um, TAC meeting, I guess maybe something like that. TAC, okay. Um, <clears throat> on the subject of the cemetery board, though, I did. Um, I've tried to get the board the board together, and. Um, <clears throat> Um, the board president is knee deep in farming, and he said he would call me when the, the next rain event occurs. <laughs> I think we may be talking November. So, you know, that, that's all we can do for now. <laughs> okay. Did you have anything else to add to some Clifton Cemetery business? No. No. Uh, and the TAC meeting that's coming up is canceled, and I did not, uh, I don't think I made reference at the last meeting to, it's not, technically not TAC, but MBRPC uh, organized a workshop on uh, drainage mm -hmm. uh, the end of September. I went to it, it was one of the presenters didn't show up, mm. so it, it was, people were visibly disappointed, uh, it was underwhelming, but it raised a lot of questions about, and I mentioned this before, are we facing a new world of increased uh, rain events, mm. or more intense rain events, that our drainage planning 
necessarily town, not, it's not the township's responsibility, mm -hmm. but what are different governments have, and voluntary associations between farmers that plan for uh, and we may be seeing more and more complaints about yeah. backed up stuff that never backed up before. Mm -hmm. Or flooded roads. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen it within Yellow Springs. Yeah, five inch rain. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't figure well, that's a hundred that's a hundred year plan and five years rain. Something like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm interested in any any anecdotes about drainage I would I'd like to hear. I'm, I'm interested in developing that as a special Okay. Um Aside from the fact that I hate anachronisms, um, what is the, uh, the McKee group called? James A. McKee Association. John. Jim. Yeah. I hate that. <laughs> but, uh, I did a ten Seven minutes. <laughs> I know. Is that new business or old business? That's new business. Don's name was mentioned several times. <coughs> Positively, I hope. Mm -hmm. Only okay. because I wasn't there. <laughs> okay, moving right along. Uh, any new business this evening? Any old businesses, maybe? Uh, I have not heard back from Dale Arnold, who was so enthusiastic about coming. <laughs> So they may be surprised at the next meeting, but so we'll I mean, old, old business the next meeting, perhaps. <laughs> Remember, he was from Farm Bureau and wanted to talk about, was happy to talk about uh, issues around solar farms. Mm -hmm. Well, he's happy to talk, <laughs> as I recall. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Oh, yes, I am. Huh? A question at the end. Uh, Not going there. Okay. Not going there. Right. <laughs> I still have a bad taste in my mouth on that. Now that you mentioned it, I asked Bob Hackett his, his impression or what his thoughts were about solar farms and ag ag agricultural districts. And 20 minutes later, <laughs> there wasn't a hint of a referral to the question. I mean, he answered, but didn't. He, he answered everything but. <laughs> Not to that. And took a long time doing it. So anyway, my only old business is, uh, I heard from Mike Hardy from Servla today, and he's still working on uh, and, and making progress on revising our website presence for us. So something shall be coming forth from that. Okay. Anything else this evening? Mm -hmm. I entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All right. We're. We're